Hi, I'm Katrina. I am an ambassador for cerebral palsy sport. Welcome to this podcast, raising awareness of cerebral palsy and disabilities. In this podcast, I will also be sharing my own experience. To begin, what is cerebral palsy? Cerebral palsy, also known as CP, is a condition that is caused by a variety of reasons, which can lead to damage to parts of the brain. The underlying issues that cause CP could be during childbirth. There are different types of CP and severity, such as hemiplegia. This means that half of the body is weaker than the other, mainly the arm and the leg. I, Katrina, am hemiplegic. My right side is weaker and part of my brain on the left is damaged. Monoplegia. This affects one limb, mainly an arm. Diaplegic. This affects either the upper body or lower body. If the upper body is affected, then the lower body is not, or alternatively, the other way round. Quadriplegic. All four limbs are affected. Having CP myself isn't easy. It is a daily struggle. So how do I motivate others when I am struggling myself? Well, we can all relate and have something in common. That is, we all struggle with something in life and we do not let that get the better of us. For example, we all have things that have scarred or have wounded us, whether it is physical, emotional or eternal. We can either see these things as just as a scar or a wound. How I interpret mine is that each scar or a wound, physical or emotional, represents a story which is part of who I have become and what I have experienced. It is very common to hide away and not talk about the things that have hurt us. However, the things that we have faced, we can let this be an open door to other people going through something similar. This can give them a sense of hope that sure, it must not have been easy going through the experience, but what happened has helped me become a stronger and braver person. Even when CP has become a daily struggle and challenge each day, I remind myself and others not to succumb to the obstacles, but through this develop determination, drive, and inner strength to overcome what they face. For example, back in 2015, I drowned having a seizure during swimming training, and that really shook me, not knowing if I could ever get back into the water and continue to train and compete for my local club. But with a lot of determination, inner strength and support, I did not let that episode set me back from pursuing a sport that I love and is a huge part of my life. Sure, there have been more than one time I've had a seizure while swimming, but I have learned during those times, and even now, with the fear I had, the only way to overcome fear is to face it. By facing that fear and overcoming it. By facing that fear and overcoming it, it led me to great opportunities to swim nationally, internationally, to represent England at the CP World Games in Barcelona in 2018, coming home with two golds and a silver medal, and even qualifying for the 2016 Paralympic trials. Imagine all those lost opportunities if I let that episode dictate my life. Say yes. Say yes to giving things a go. You never know what opportunities lie ahead. A disability should never be seen as a weakness, but as a a strength, as each of us have our own story to help and inspire others. Many people see people with disability as people who can't do much. They cannot see beyond the disability. Therefore, there is less interactivity between people who have and don't have a disability. However, if people saw their disability, but also saw the person behind the disability, then they would realize we're more than just our disability. How does CP affect my life? 
CP affects my daily life in different ways. However, I'm still able to do a lot of the things that most people, like you, can do. I can do everyday things, such as walk, run, and take care of myself. However, the things that I struggle with are the muscular things that require both hands. For example, holding a tray, opening a can, filling up a hot water bottle, or even typing on a device. CP mainly affects my muscles and brain, and that is a daily challenge I experience. Every day, 24 seven, I feel a stabbing pain. The only way I can explain the feeling is like a knife stabbing me constantly all over my body. Since I am in constant pain, I have to adapt accordingly to how bad the pain may be. Day to day, I cannot determine what it will be the next day. Any form of exercise, running, walking, going to the gym, going swimming, helps manage the severity, but my muscles are always constantly tight. They never relax, and this causes additional pain. For example, I cannot sit upright in a chair as the pressure of the pain is shifted towards my lower body. Unless I am doing something, for example, eating or watching TV or sitting upright, as this distracts me in how much excruciating pain I have to bear. If I sit on the floor, the pressure is lessened, the pain is spread out more evenly. I always try and adapt to reduce the additional pain by keeping myself warm and trying my best not to get myself cold because when my muscles are cold, they tighten even more as if my muscles didn't think I'm in a lot of pain already. Thanks muscles. My brain and muscles when trying to work together. Mm. Let me just say they are never friends. My brain doesn't always connect to my body. Therefore, when that happens, I heavily rely on my muscle memory to tell me what to do. If my muscles are struggling to move, guess what? My brain is functioning well. See, I told you they're not friends. I would have to listen to my body and adapt even more, even if it means a little forced of movement. I have rarely experienced what friendship is like. Often, I feel I am only seen when I initiate. It is very rare that people check in on me to see how I am. So socially, it affects my life. In the past, I was verbally and physically bullied by friends. To them, I was just as a friend seen as target practice. I may not experience bullying in the same way as before. However, the difference is is that the actions and words, they still make me feel unwanted without people realizing they are doing it. I always feel I am undervalued, underminded, unnoticed, and faded out of friendships because many can't look past behind my disability. Where do I see misconceptions with those who have a disability? I first see misconceptions to start with the actual word disability, splitting the word in two. The words are dis and ability. The words dis everyone sees, they can apply words that have dis in them. For example, disrespect and discrimination. And people forget about the word ability because there are no words that go with the word ability. Therefore, it feels people think we are less intellectual, able and underestimated. Just like cerebral palsy, there are many different disabilities, not just physical, but invisible disabilities. For example, intellectual, hearing, visually impairment, whether it is fully or partial, and autism. This demonstrates that different disabilities have their own challenges and ability. Whatever the disability may be, we should change our perspectives and actively listen through our ears rather than relying on judgment through our eyes. 
just because someone has a disability, that does not mean they are disabled. Disabled or not, every person matters. Everyone has a purpose. Everyone should be valued. Everyone is special in their own way and they should be cared, loved and equally treated. How can we change those misconceptions? I feel that being open to people about disability will help them and it should not come as a subject that we should dismiss. The more we talk, the more we ask questions, the more we engage people with those who have a disability, the more comfortable people will feel as the conversation starts. For example, the topic of mental health and the Black Lives Matter movement. So why not raise awareness of cerebral palsy and disability? The misconceptions will become less of a phase, but slowly breaking down those barriers. With many people who have a disability, they will feel more connected, included, accepted, and less forgotten and invisible. The things you do are your choice. With your choice, it can make a difference. I have learned to own my choices. Own the choices you make that don't require waiting on others to give permission. As this podcast comes to a close, I'd like to put out a question to anyone listening. Which box do you fall under? Do you see someone who has a disability and focus on their disability? Or do you see the person that they are behind the disability? Thank you for listening. Bye guys.